Good morning. I want to tell you the true story. It goes back to 2009 in a Lancashire town. It concerns a man who, in trying to blot out a painful memory of having been traumatically abused as a child, who then struggled to cope. His way of dealing with the pain was through drugs and alcohol. This led him to subsequently gain a 30-year reputation of being a dangerous, violent drug user and dealer. He was, by 2009, a well-established underworld fixer here in the North West. He was a man others would contact to help clear drug debts. By the time he got the call, it meant someone was heavily in debt to equally dangerous people. They were about to get hurt and badly. So here he was, sitting in a parked car with the engine running for a quick getaway, with a plastic bag on his knee. It wasn't his car, it was a stolen car, and the bag was a gun. He got out the, ga out the car with the plastic bag in his hand when he saw his target, a man walking out of the gym who happened to have two young children with him. I'll come back to the story later, after one of today's set readings, which is taken from the New Testament book of Hebrews, chapter 14. Let us then hold firmly to the faith we, pros we pros Let us then hold firmly to the faith we profess, for we have a great high priest who has gone into the very presence of God, Jesus, the Son of God. Our high priest is not one who can who cannot feel sympathy for our weaknesses. On the contrary, we have a high priest who was tempted in every way that we are, but did not sin. Let us then, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace and help in time of need. The throne the writer talks about here is a place of authority and power, while grace convey, conveys the idea of sympathy and understanding all combined in Jesus, a man of infinite power, yet in complete and utter sympathy with each of us. For many, it is only when crisis overtakes us that we turn to God, pleading for him for help. Our prayers, our pleading, our pleading for help, even if they're not answered in the way we'd like, are all made through the high priest who has experienced it all. He knows how we feel. He understands what it is like to sense distance from God, to be weak, inadequate, afraid. Therefore, he is qualified as a high priest. The reading continues. While Jesus was here on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings with a loud cry and tears to the one who would rescue him from death. And God heard his prayers because of his deep reverence for God. Something Jesus continues to do now, interceding to God on our behalf. Not only interceding, but pleading. So returning to my story, as a man approached his target, another drug dealer, he found he could only walk past, leaving the man unharmed. To this day, he doesn't know what happened that day. But one thing he is certain of, that this was a moment that changed his life forever. In his own words, he recalled, I collapsed, then struggled back to the car. I felt sick. I was shaking, sweating, heart beating fast. I could hear my pulse as if it was in my own head. I didn't know what was happening to me. Here was someone who had been arrested for attempted murder, kidnapping, firearms offences. Yet all he wanted to do himself was to die. He'd had enough. He actually took the gun pressed it to his chin, still wrapped in the plastic bag, pulled the trigger, but it didn't fire. Then, he said, not knowing what to do, he pleaded with God to help him, but nothing happened. But this did set off an intervention by the health authorities. Within 24 hours, he was sectioned under the Mental Health Act. Fast forward to today, you'll find a man now known as Pastor Mick, with the Church on the Street Ministries he has since set up in, Bur in Burnley. Pastor Mick's new home is in the heart of Burnley Town Centre, a former gym 
that closed during the pandemic. The building has been reborn as the church on the street. He is even now out in those very streets, seven days a week, among those most in need, the homeless, the drug users, the hungry. It is said that the only person, man or woman, who can qualify to help others as a priest must be chosen by God. No amount of education or degrees or human authority can replace God's appointment. In Pastor Mick's case, he hadn't had much of an education. He struggled to read and write and had been diagnosed with dyslexia. A priest must understand hurt, foolishness, inadequacy. He must be able to understand human experience. He must understand enough of God's heart and God's purposes to bring the wisdom, healing, forgiveness and the love of God to bear on a given situation. He must also understand the human condition so that he can offer help to hurting and needy people. Pastor Mick definitely fulfills those criteria and more as he now cares for those who have nothing, not even hope. He spends time with them, giving them hope. Exactly how I picture Jesus today, like Pastor Mick in this photo, sitting with those very same people. He is an example to each of us. With grace comes forgiveness. A few years ago he befriended a homeless alcoholic outside a takeaway. He listened to him, he cared for him, helped him to get off drugs and sober and eventually reunite with his family. The man however died two years later but his family was thankful for the time they'd had together. This was a man who had abused him as a child. Pastor Mick to me is an example of God's mercy of God's grace, someone who is an example to every one of us. If I can finish with a prayer. May the God who created a world of diversity and vibrancy go with us as we embrace life in all its fullness. May the Son who teaches us to care for a stranger, for foreigners, go with us as we try to be good neighbours in our communities. May the Spirit who breaks down our barriers and celebrates community Go with us as we find the courage to create a place of welcome for all. Amen. Now, whatever you're doing today, this week, do it safely and if you can, with a smile on your face. And remember the example of Pastor Mick. Bye for now.